News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk, KGVO, AM 1290 and 101.5 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. Ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Look at the snow. Good morning, everyone. It's Montana Morning. Congratulations. You made it. It's Friday, December the 9th, 2016. Right now, we do have some light snow falling in western Montana. It's been snowing most of the night. have a couple of inches on the ground right now. We have uh, 9 degrees in Missoula. And we also have road conditions throughout western Montana that are snow-covered, snow-packed and icy. So wherever, wherever you go, you're going to find winter driving conditions. So please slow down. Plows have been out all night. Uh, I talked to the Sheriff's Department this morning. The uh, plows have been out all night working hard, trying to put uh, the... Um, uh, the the de-icer on the road here in, in in the city, of course, in the county, they're using sand. So use uh, please use caution. Take extra time to get where you're going. It's winter. We just need to start thinking about that. All right. The uh, newscast this morning is sponsored by Selway Armory on Stockyard Road. With more guns and ammo than anyone in Missoula, the best prices in Montana, Montana's premier firearms dealer. Well, let's talk about the weather. There have been several reports from the National Weather Service over the last week predicting varying amounts of snow in the Missoula Valley from numerous systems moving through the area uh, last night all the way through the coming weekend. Meteorologist Corby Dickerson spoke to me yesterday afternoon and reacted to the question of just how much snow Missoula might expect. Starting tonight with the light amounts of snow falling through tomorrow morning, about maybe an inch-ish around Missoula and the northern Bitterroot. But after that, tomorrow night we get another wave of moisture. It looks even you know, a little bit better and looks like by Saturday morning we should have a couple of inches on the ground. Dickerson said the major snowfall is occurring in the mountains of western Montana. By the end of the weekend, up at like Lolo Pass, for example, we're probably going to be sitting with close to two feet of snow by the end of the weekend on top of what's already up there. And then you move up into the Sealy Swan and you move south of here down towards Lost Trail and they're probably going to see similar amounts of snow in the mountains. Okay, again, uh, the uh, roads are snow-packed, snow-covered, and icy around western Montana, wherever you go. Dickerson said more bands of snow will move through the area. Much colder temperatures will spill into the area by the middle of next week. We'll get the forecast for you later on in the uh, in the newscast. The U.S. House has approved a water rights settlement with Montana's Blackfeet American Indian Tribe as part of a broader bill addressing water projects across the nation. Just before the vote, Montana Congressman Ryan Zinke addressed the House members on the importance of passing that compact. I cannot stress how important this compact is to the Blackfeet Nation, a nation of warriors, the state of Montana, and our great nation, the United States. Not only did the compact receive the necessary and long sign-off that involved federal agencies, the House Natural Resources Committee, and House leadership, it is a net benefit to the American taxpayer. Zinke commended tribal leadership as he urged passage of the bill. I want to commend the Blackfeet warriors for all their hard work, especially Chairman Harry Barnes for his guidance and leadership, and also Chairman Bishop for his leadership. And I urge my colleagues in the House and Senate to put politics aside and pass this bill. It has a $420 million price tag. However, money for the settlement was not included in the bill. It will have to be addressed separately. Negotiations on the agreement began more than 30 years ago. Thursday's passage sends the measure, the measure back to the Senate. A 22-year-old evergreen woman has been sentenced to five years in the custody of the Department of Corrections for her role in the death of her two-year-old son. Takara Juntadin was sentenced yesterday after pleading guilty to felony mitigated negligent homicide for the February 2015 death of Forrest Groeschel. The Daily Interlake reports Juntanen thanked District Judge Heidi Ulbrecht for recommending drug treatment as part of her sentence. Brandon Newberry is serving a 40-year prison term for mitigated deliberate homicide in that same case. The State Department of Transportation is delaying requests for bids on about $144 million in road construction projects until May due to a budget shortfall that could put funding for the projects in jeopardy. The project will be paid for with $130 million in federal money and $14.5 million from the state. The Montana Infrastructure Coalition is proposing a $0.10 cent increase in the state's $0.27 cents per gallon fuel tax, which would generate an estimated $80 million. Budget Director Dan Villa said the governor is open to discussing a fuel tax increase, but not advocating for it. Now, 
In a related story, over the past 48 hours, the news broke of the fact that the Department of Transportation had run out of funds, uh, which might include work on the Russell Street Bridge. Montana State Senate Majority Leader Fred Thomas says the information was known by the governor for months, but was kept under wraps because it might impact, might have impacted Steve Bullock's re-election bid. I, I realize that it was announced and it was in the paper yesterday, but we've known for months that this is pending and coming, and certainly the governor's office did as well. I mean, that's... They have the greatest information available to them that's available to anybody in the state on something like this. I think that they wanted to get past the election and then announce it after the election. Thomas says another recent headline about the spread of invasive mussels in Montana water raises old news to the governor as well. I have it on a good accord that this was a known situation in July of this year. It doesn't make any sense to me because the minute you find something out like that, you want to be all over it in a heartbeat and not let a day or a week or a month go by in addressing that and controlling any movement of that nasty muscle to anywhere else. And, of course, in the summer, you're in the height of boating season, and that's when you're going to have more issues with it being transported. Thomas has been very critical of government and trans, uh, transparency in the run-up to the 2017 legislature. Missoula police have been asking, asked by family members to help find a woman who's been missing for over a month. Here's Public uh, Information Officer Travis Welsh. Recently, this young lady's family has contacted the Missoula Police Department asking for help in potentially locating their family member. She is identified as Jessica Brooks at 41 years of age. Uh, appears to be an on-again, off-again Missoula resident, and the family just has not heard from her since a Facebook message on November the 6th. Although police are helping with the search, there isn't any evidence of foul play. However, the family's worried something malicious may have occurred. Uh, no direct knowledge that anything bad has happened to her, but they're concerned as they haven't heard from her for that period of time, and it's unusual. So they're asking for any help in locating her. She's a white female, 5 feet, 720 pounds, green eyes, uh, currently has blonde hair, but it has been brown in the past. Anyone with information, ask to call Lieutenant Jake Rosling at 552-6641. News Talk time now is 612. News Talk, KGBO. Missoula's official weather station. Mostly cloudy skies with areas of snowfall this morning. Additional accumulations throughout the day will stay under an inch. We'll see a break from the snowfall this afternoon with our highs in the low 20s. More snow this evening. I'm meteorologist Brooke Foster for Missoula's KECA 13.